Um, so in this uh, interview, we're going to be talking to Dr. Evangelia Balatsu, um, and she is a cognitive neuroscientist, and she's a speech scientist as well. She's going to be talking about what she does and how she became a, uh, an expert in her field, essentially. So <clears throat> um, first off, uh, Dr. Balatsu, is that, is that a good way to call you for short? Well, you can call me Lillian. So hi, Thomas. Uh, thank you for hosting me. Uh, you can call me Lillian. So okay. Um, so Lillian, how or what is a speech scientist exactly? So a speech scientist is someone who studies or works in the field of sound production, transmission, and perception uh, perception of speech. So we usually see this title, this job title in the industry where uh, speech scientists can sometimes work as computational linguists uh, or people who, who study human speech or the acoustics of, of speech. Okay. And what influenced you to become a speech scientist? So uh, before I finished my PhD in cognitive neuroscience, I examined um, how I can transition and fit in uh, into industry instead of academia. So as a speech scientist, I found that uh, my doctoral studies and uh, the stuff that I found in my experimental work can be easily applicable into optimizing and tuning uh, the algorithms which help us understand human speech better. Okay. And so what influenced you uh, or what what is cognitive science? Um, what is a cognitive neuroscientist, sorry, and what made you want to study that? So a cognitive neuroscientist is uh, primarily a researcher, uh, usually of a PhD level, who studies human cognition, meaning the, the biological and neural processes uh, which underlie cognition, mental processes. So there is a specific focus on this particular discipline uh, about the connections of the brain and how the brain uh, is involved in gaining knowledge and uh, comprehension of the world around it. So um, I've always been kind of uh, intrigued about how the human brain works, in particular of how the human brain processes language and treats this uh, ability that we have for language. And that kind of interest, uh, you know, was formed uh, through my early adulthood. And, uh, you know, there was no way I could not chase it down. And it, that's a neuron behind you in the painting, isn't it? Yeah, it that's is kind actually. of a, an interesting painting. I <laughs> Thank like you. it. Yeah, minimalist, so you know. Mm -hmm. My my brother is a graphic designer, and he's very big into the minimalist school of sort of. That's art. cool. That's that's very interesting. Um, so, your discipline on a continuum from the humanities to the sciences, like where would it be? Because it's got like the language part and the neuroscience part. So. Where would you put it? So the way you know, we practice this, this discipline, it, fall, it falls into the sciences. Mm -hmm. However, it's an it's a interdisciplinary field. So it has aspects of psychology, of neuroscience, of linguistics, anthropology, AI, and even some, uh, some theoretical questions derived from philosophy. So, you know, nowadays we don't have this uh, dichotomous uh, split of whether, you know, something is humanities or sciences. There is this whole uh, interdisciplinary uh, field arising in many, many cases. So I would put it somewhere there. Okay. <clears throat> so going over uh, your work, so if, if somebody wanted to be a cognitive neuroscientist doing speech science, they wanted to know what, what you do day to day as a speech scientist. What do you do day to day? So in my industry work, I, I do some speech, speech science related work, which has to do with uh, programming a little bit or um, algorithm optimization, uh, looking at data, data processing, data analysis, uh, constructing dialogues and systems which communicate with humans. I also do uh, some project managing work. So I try to coordinate these implementations into bigger projects in the industry. And in, in academia, as a cognitive neuroscientist, I, I do some teaching in graduate and undergraduate levels, a lot of lab work, experiments with electroencephalography or human behavior. I talk to a lot of students. I, again, do data analysis, so you can see uh, the connecting point between mm -hmm. those two. Uh, mentoring, um, all sorts of stuff. 
So just out of interest as a, a software developer, what uh, languages do you do most of your programming in as a speech scientist? So speech science tends to use a lot of Python. Um, I, I'm more inclined to do R. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think I prefer R for, for a lot of reasons. It, it's also good statistical uh, language. So, and I also find it more user-friendly, but uh, a lot of uh, data mining uh, processes or neural network uh, simulations you can do in Python as well. Okay, with PyTorch, is that what you use? Uh, yeah, yeah, PyTorch is one of the tools. Okay. And what do you uh, hope to achieve in the course of your career as a speech scientist? So generally, you know, I hope to, to continue to learn as much as possible. Uh, I, you know, have this thirst for knowledge, which I really hope it never fades out. Uh, I'd like to contribute my part into making machines um, smarter or humanizing AI in a sense, um, make it easier for them to interact with humans and making them less greedy when interacting with humans. Mm -hmm. uh, ethical in a sense. So in general, uh, I do hope that, you know, I can transfer all the, the scientific knowledge that I have gained from my lab and experimental work into academia, uh, from academia, into a concrete uh, business or more societal, if you want to say, value. Okay. So you sort of transition the, the theoretical to the practical. That's, is that or, my understanding, right? Or the experiment from the experimental to the to the one that makes uh, the most impact into our oh, everyday. Okay. okay and when you were learning uh, your discipline to be a speech scientist what resources did you find to be most useful and what do you use uh for learning now when you have to pick up new skills so basically when i was in academia or in my beginning uh, as a speech scientist uh, I found that scientific articles, uh, workshops, in-lab work from colleagues, uh, conferences, uh, reviewers, you know, this whole academic community of knowledge is very useful uh, to, to initiate you in a field and to kind of build up your own expertise. Uh, nowadays, I usually find out that uh, the biggest learning that I get is through experience, uh, interactions with different technicians, with clients, uh, looking at the market, uh, understanding what, what is trending in the market. Uh, so it's, it's kind of more experience-based, the learning as I proceed. And it, it sounds like a lot of your learning is in sort of the business field too, like from the way you're describing it, like how to, how to make this like so, practical yeah, and reasonable yeah, in, exactly. in a business setting. Yeah, sorry. So exactly, it's because actually you, it's it, it's an industry job. So you you, you actually uh, see firsthand how to make this um, work uh, applicable in your everyday life or this knowledge that you have. So a lot of learning has to do with pure experience. Okay, that's that's interesting. I I like the. Uh, I mean. I'm, I'm studying right now in a master's program. And so you hear a lot about, you know, keep up with the academic literature, but I haven't heard a lot of people give that advice. You know, you have to have experience doing stuff, <laughs> but it, it sounds, it makes sense. It's very. I mean, I also have this kind of um, uh, thinking when I, when I first got into the field. So uh, in industry, you learn that experience matters a lot. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, perhaps the most integral part uh, in academia, you don't, you, you usually connect your experience and blur it with a lot of knowledge and information or skills that you learn. However, yeah, experience in industry, I think it's a key point. So, um, thinking about students of cognitive neuroscience, what do you find the most uh, challenging and the easiest thing for those students to learn is, in your opinion? So, in general, uh, thinking outside the box. It's a field that um, requires you to, to not only read a lot and gain this technical knowledge, but it's, it's a field that requires you to, to continuously think and you know, uh, level up uh, your, your thinking in a sense. So you, you also have to 
uh, prove something through numbers. So you have to uh, do a lot of, um, you know, connect what you want to find with what you actually find. You have to build experiments that work, uh, prove things. So even if someone disagrees with you on a theoretical level, they can accept that what you're saying or what you found is true. So I think that's one of the hardest things, try to make good predictive science. Okay. So learn essentially just learning to be a scientist, you know, to... Yeah. Yeah. So in a nutshell, yeah, I would say that. So the 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 memorizing different you know parts of the brain that's not hard, but the, the learning to think like a scientist, I guess. That's exactly, right. exactly. So you know, not that uh, kind of knowledge and information exchange. That's something that you can you can find in a lot of disciplines and fields. But learning to be a scientist in a nutshell, you put it very well. Thank you. Um, so if you could choose three skills, they're not directly related to, um, to uh, cognitive neuroscience or speech science, but that you think would help you in that, uh, what would they be? So one necessary soft skill that I think of is people skills. I think it's very necessary for all kinds of work uh, in the industry, whether that is uh, managerial work or whether that's uh, teamwork. Uh, this is something that uh, you kind of get a glimpse through it uh, in academia, but industry is uh, has shorter deadlines, much more pressure, a different environment. So I think that uh, good people skills is a, is a very necessary skill set that will help you develop further. Uh, I think maths, mathematics uh, is a skill that offers you this ground uh, knowledge that's necessary primarily every work. Uh, and of course, working in this uh, technological sector, I found out that, you know, IT skills, basic IT skills are very necessary for every job in the industry, especially nowadays, and especially with these uh, remote working scenarios. I, I think it's really interesting you brought up people skills. I think it's really easy to like think of like, um, you know, because you're, you're a speech scientist, you think of scientists as like these like, white-haired crazy people who yeah. like who can't put together a complete sentence you know and or a, a nice complete sentence they can't like engage with other people but that's I think I've actually heard that from multiple uh people in the sciences that you have to be able to you know talk to people you know yeah I mean that's a whole uh, a whole new perspective that we get of scientists nowadays so you you want to humanize science and highlight the diversity in scientists and uh, there used to be this old image of this uh, lone wolf uh, professor or um, you know this uh, kind of awkward person etc cetera, etc cetera. but um, actually nowadays we see that the, the face of the scientist is changing as well and don't forget that in the sciences we rarely have uh, individual level work now, most of the work is collaborative. So, you know, that's a necessary skill set, I think. Um, so if you had a student, if we had a student here who's considering going into speech science and cognitive neuroscience, um, what advice would you give that person? Ooh, to, to, first of all, I'd say, come join us. It's a very <laughs> exciting field. It's one of the most exciting things that you can study or, or do in your life, you know, demystifying the brain, understanding how the brain works. Um, and, and, and initial advice would be to, to read a lot, uh, to think continuously, um, to be intuitive, because um, sometimes you understand that the brain works in this very intuitive way. Um, learn stats as quickly as possible. It's going to save you a lot of time. <laughs> and in general, try to make good and reproducible uh, science in the future. Try to think as sci science is something objective and not subjective. Okay. I think you kind of answered the next one I was going to ask, which is what advice would you give to someone who's starting out, who's already chosen this field, but is starting out? Um, do yeah, you have... I, I um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's fine. <clears throat> but um, uh, do you have uh, sort of anything that helped you as you were starting out that, you know, maybe wouldn't be for everybody, but just sort of an experience that helped you? Well, um, I think discussing with my peers, learning from them, because some people come from different backgrounds. So mm -hmm. learning from someone who has a, 
uh, a psychology background, someone who has a neuroscience background, interacting with the scientific community. I think one of the biggest advantages of the sci scientific community nowadays is that there is this uh, bigger accessibility and mm -hmm. interaction between everyone. So I think learning from others is uh, the top advice that helped me. Like no one becomes uh, a scientist by themselves. Uh, you know, you gain this you get this transfer of knowledge and you also give knowledge back. That's also very useful to teach, for example, that also helped me understand better what I know. Well, thank you. That's all the questions I had, but uh, it's been really fun to talk to you. I've, um, I'm have i currently studying neuroscience in my master's program. So I like to talk to neuroscientists. I think it's kind of fun. Thank you. Dr. Um, do you have any plugs you want to make, like uh, go Patriots? I see you have a Patriots uh, football <laughs> in the background there. Well, yeah, it's my partner, so go Patriots. Oh. Yes. <laughs> uh, so basically, thank you. I find it very useful um, uh, to talk about this. I think uh, you know it's, it's a form of sharing what uh, we have gained through experience, which I highlighted uh, that it's important. Um, thank you. I think it's a really good initiative what you're doing. Okay, and I'll, I'll uh, make sure to uh, uh, keep up with you on LinkedIn and uh, let you know when I find anything cognitive neuroscience interesting. <laughs> of course, of course, of course.